Hello everybody. Good day to all of us. We are the future science teacher of Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology. And for today's learning, we're going to discuss about the digestive system. Let's find out. Before that, we must know the objectives of this topic. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to explain the parts of the digestive system, discuss or give the meaning of each parts, and tell what is the digestion process. Give the function of each parts, identify what is the digestive system is, define the digestive system, and identify how it works the digestion process. Appreciate the importance of the digestive system in our daily lives and understand the different parts of the digestive system. Now, let's talk about the history of the digestive system. Medical professionals used to think of the stomach as an involved almost thinking organ in the body. Gallen wrote describing the stomach as an animate being that could feel its emptiness and generate the sensation of hunger. As you can see, this photo shows the historical process of the digestive system. It means the biological process which is took the advantage of describing the digestive system is to know the important conduction of digesting. According to Gallen wrote, describe the factors of being fully action taken when we feel and generate the sensation of hunger of our digestive system. We all know the arrangement of the stomach, colon, and intestine had a perception known by medieval and ancient anatomy. That's why the digestive system divide or cut out into six parts and still used to our modern anatomy subject. Let's proceed to the etymology to structure and composition of the digestive system. The human digestive system is a system that helps the body absorb food. The digestive tract or collection of structures and organs by which food and liquids move during the transformation into forms that can be absorbed in the bloodstream. The human digestive system states the absorption of food that is actually controlled the collection of structures of all organs to our digestive system or the information construct which is consists of common parts that is worked together of food and liquid into building blocks and fuel to generate the digestion process. Food is broken down into nutrients such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins by the digestive system. They can be absorbed into your bloodstream and used for energy growth and repair by your body. As you can see, this is the components of all digestive system parts that has a lot of function and meaning that we will tackle later. It seems to be like food is broken down and digest it when the signal of each part requires to pop up carefully. The process which is some nutrients that we take like carbohydrates, fats, and proteins by the digestive system the purpose of it is used for energy, growth, and repair to our body. And also, the digestive system, also known as GI tract as well, or what we call the gastrointestinal tract, that made up of hollow structures such as the mouth, esophagus, liver, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. Now, let's talk about the digestion process. Remember that digestion and absorption are the function of the digestive system because this is the preparatory process of food that we ate that is broken down into small pieces of grinding. There are two common processes of digestion, the mechanical and chemical digestion. When it comes to mechanical, it is the way of broken down of foods in physical mechanism and goes up to chemical digestion by feeling the nutrients coming from the food we eat. 
there are six activities of digestion, and these are ingestion, propulsion, mechanical or physical digestion, chemical digestion, absorption, and defecation. As you can see, this is the figure or illustration of the digestion process, which is first is the mouth. When the food is chewed, the saliva starts to determine or to respond in digesting carbohydrates and goes down to the esophagus, which the muscle process called the persistasis. Ano nga ba yung tinatawag natin na persistasis? It is simple. Push or fling the food down to our stomach. Then after that, it goes to the stomach, which the food blended into digestive juices. Next is the liver, which is the green liquid whole bile that is stored, secreted to break down fats, which is more again to pancreas. A lot of enzymes made here and after that it goes to the small intestine. When the food is mixed up together with the bile, it can send ideal information processing. Next one goes to large intestine. The ingestible food proceeds to digest, stored, and lastly, it goes to the rectum and anus. The food we ate became a solid waste passes from the rectum at the same time. In the movement of some organ in the digestive system, such as mouth is for chewing, esophagus is for peristasis, stomach is for relaxes to let food enter and lower muscle mixes, food with digestive juices, and also small intestine and large intestine is for peristasis which is to push down the food that we eat to the stomach. Pancreas and liver are none. As you can see in this figure, the food that we eat goes down to the esophagus through stomach. It is called the increased gastric secretion of gastrin and when it came to the large intestine to small intestine the hormones that we re that we release it is called the decreased gastric secretion and now how it digestion works process the alimentary canal also known as the digestive tract in this case the alimentary canal, also known as the digestive trap. The delivery organs is to thrill the digestion process, which is specific amount of reaction to our body with the process of spit saliva. When we say spit saliva, the senses of signal connects to the brain, precise the information when eating a food or drinking water is being defined. Before food enters the stomach, digestion starts in the mouth. Our salivary glands in front of the ear under the tongue and near the lower jaw start producing saliva when we see smell, smell, taste, or even imagine a tasty meal spit. Amylase pronouns begins to break down some of the carbohydrates, starches, and sugars in the food. As we know, food is transferred into the throat or parings by swallowing, which is achieved by muscle movements in the tongue that is pronounced by pharynx, meat and a shovel from the parings, which is the parings are the food transferred into movement by the swallowing of the branches of food that we eat to achieve muscles carefully and necessarily. And, all, and also the epiglottis closes over the windpipe as we swallow. Food passes down the esophagus, a muscular tube in the mouth from the throat. Peristalsis is a series of muscle constructions that drive food down the esophagus and into the stomach. The motions of the esophagus, stomach, and intestine that occur when food moves through the digestive tract are usually a notice. Once again, I am Mark Lawrence as Evangelista, your first presenter of this topic. And now to discuss the common parts of the digestive system, let us all welcome Mamli Ann Garido. 
Thank you, Sir Mark Lawrence Evangelista, for kindly introducing me. Hi, good day everyone. I am Julian May David Garrido, and I am here to discuss with you the parts and the functions of the digestive system. We need nutrients to sustain our bodily functions, which means we need to eat food. And that food must be broken down into tiny components that can cells can use to, so, to produce energy. So how does it work? So let's start to know the parts and the functions of the digestive system. The first part of the digestive system is the mouth. As you can see in the PowerPoint presentation, mouth is where the digestive tract begins. Digestion begins long before you take the first bite. When you see and smell the pasta dish or warm bread, your salivary glands become active. When you first start eating, you chew your food into smaller pieces that are easier to digest. And your saliva reacts with the food, breaking it down into a shape that your body can absorb and use. Our mouth has two main functions. It is responsible for us to eat and for us to speak. Chewing is essential for humans because it helps enzymes and acids to get to our food by breaking it down into smaller and smaller pieces. After our teeth or mouth have broken down the bits to a small enough size, chemicals break them down even further until they find enough for our bodies to consume nutrients. For the second slide, we can see the different sections of our mouth. The majority of saliva is produced by three large salivary glands, the parotid, some mandibular, and some legal glands. The parotid glands are present in the front and below the ear, as you can see in our PowerPoint presentation. The submandibular glands are located on both sides of the mouth, just under the deep to the jaw. Approximately 70% of the saliva in our mouth is formed by this gland. Meanwhile, the sub, sub, sublingual glands are located under the tongue and supply saliva to the mouth's surface. We can also see the soft and the hard palate, the ubula, and the palatine tonsils. The tongue is made up of skeletal muscle fibers and is secured to the floor of the mouth by the lingual frenulum. Salivary glands produce saliva which cleans the mouth, moistens it, dissolves food and contains enzymes that begin breaking down into a certain pieces. Next is the esophagus. The esophagus absorbs food from our mouth as you swallow and is, it, it is located near our trachea or our windpipe. To keep you from coughing or choking, the epiglottis is a thin flap that folds over our windpipe with or when we swallow or when food goes into our windpipe. Food exits the mouth and travels next to the esophagus after being swallowed. Now that the food has reached the esophagus, a wave of food's muscle or a wave of smooth muscle constructions occurs that pushing the food into our stomach and that smooth muscle movement called peristalsis is the stomach. 
The stomach is a hollow organ that retains food as it is combined with stomach enzymes. These enzymes help in the breakdown of food into a shape that can be eaten. The stomach lining cells secrete a strong acid as well as powerful enzyme that help in the breakdown process. When the contents of the stomach being properly processed, they are released into our small intestine. The stomach is an incredible organ of our body. It, uh, this organ can hold up to 2 liters of food and liquids and in various size from person to person. It is basically a muscle bag that can hold food for up to 2 to 3 hours. It is also a J-shape and it contains of mucus, digestive enzymes, and acids. The enzymes are used to chemically break down the food and it breaks down protein into amino acids. The more food goes into our stomach, the more it actively expands. The contents of our stomachs known as chyme are slowly goes into our small intestine. Next is the a small intestine. Um, our small intestine ha has 22 foot long muscular tube made up of three segments, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. It breaks down food using enzymes produced by the pancreas and the bile from the liver. Food is passed into this organ by peristalsis, by the help of the peristalsis, which combines it with digestive juices from the pancreas and the liver. There are three sections of our small intestine, the first of which is the duodenum, followed by jejunum and ileum. Um, the small intestine is perfect for absorption of nutrients. The liver sends bile to the gallbladder, which secretes it into the first portion of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. And the enzymes also carry out the final construction of proteins into amino acids and carbohydrates into glucose. And this happens in the lower portion of our small intestine, which is the jejunum and ileum, which are coated in millions of tiny conjections called villi. And for the last part that I will share with you is the And for the last part that I will share with you is the large intestine. Our large intestine is also called colon. The function of the large intestine is to absorb fluids and salts from the indigestible food matter and to collect the eventually relieve the body of waste matter. It is divided into a several sections which consist of cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and this also includes the rectum canal. Cecum is a pouch-like structure that is about 7.5 cm in diameter and it is located in the lower right side of our abdomen. It also re receives the food material called chyme from the small intestine at the ileum. The ascending colon's job is to consume the digested materials existing water and nutrients before strengthening it into a poop or into a waste. The transverse colon absorbs water and 
salts. The descending column is where wastes are stored before being drained into our rectum. And the last section is a curved section called a sigmoid colon. The foods that converted into pieces are stored in this um, seg- section. And until it travels to the rectum, then exits to our body. So far, I've just done my part of the presentation. Mom, Alisa Lagasca has entered to continue our lesson. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Thank you, Miss Julianne Garrido, for introducing me. So again, I'm Alisa Luis C. Lagasca. So let's me let me continue our discussion for the day. So, as you can see in the presentation, here is the here is the illustration of the pancreas. So, pancreas and the duodenum. In case you didn't know, the duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. The pancreas secretes digestive enzymes that break down protein, fats, and carbohydrates. The pancreas also produces insulin, which is released into the bloodstream. <coughs> excuse me, directly. Insulin is the enzyme in charge of sugar metabolism in our body. So the pancreas is an organ located in the abdomen. It plays an essential role in converting the food we eat into fuel for our body cells. The pancreas has two main functions, which is the exocrine function and endocrine function. In exocrine function, it helps in digestion and endocrine function that regulates up our blood sugar which is insulin is the enzyme that in charge of our sugar metabolism in our body so the main function of the pancreas in our body so the pancreas is about the size of our hand like this then during digestion the our pancreas makes pancreatic juices called enzymes that break down protein fats and carbohydrates and our pancreas also helps our digestive system by making hormones. So next part, the liver. So in this presentation, you can see the picture of the liver. So liver is also responsible for the detoxification of potentially harmful chemicals and it degrades and secretes a number of drugs that are potential potentially harmful to the body. So the liver is an organ only found in vertebrates which detoxifies various metabolites, synthesizes necessary synthesizes proteins and produces produces biochemicals necessary for our digestion and growth. And in humans, it is located in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen below the diaphragm. So the main function of the liver is the liver regulates most chemical levels in the blood in our blood and excretes a product called bile and it is and it helps carry away waste products from the liver and all the blood living to the stomach and intestines passes through the liver so the primary functions of the liver are by production and excretion, excretion of bile and brain, cholesterol hormones, metabolism of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, enzyme activation, and many more. So the next part is the gallbladder. So in this, so in this presentation, you can see the gallbladder here. It is a small pouch that sits just under the liver. So, the gallbladder absorbs and concentrates bile from the liver before releasing it into the small intestine duodenum. As I've said earlier, the duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. I assist in the absorption and digestion of fats. So, the main function of the gallbladder is stores bile produced by the liver. So after meals, the gallbladder is empty and flat. 
like a deflated balloon. Before a meal, the gallbladder may be full of bile and about the size of small beer, like this. So, next part is rectum. So, the rectum is an 8-inch straight chamber that connects the colon and anus. The rectum's function is to collect stool from the colon, notify you that stool needs to be evacuated or pooped out, and keep the stool until it is evacuated. Sensor sends a message to the brain when something like gas or stool enters the rectum. So, the rectum is between the colon and anus. It is the rectum. This is the rectum. And the main function of the rectum is to receive stool from the colon to let you know that there is stool to be evacuated or poked out or your vowel movement and to hold the stool until evacuation happens if you excrete the stool. So, the last part of the digestive tract, which is the anus. In this illustration, this is the anus. So, anus, the pelvic floor muscles, and the two anal sphincters are connected by a two-inch canal, the internal and external. The upper anus lining can detect the rectal contents. It will tell you if the contents are liquid, gas, or solid. Sphincter muscles surround the anus, which is important for controlling stool. So the main function of the anus is when the rectum is full, your body feels the urge to have a bowel movement. The internal anal sphincter relaxes and pushes the stool from the rectum into the anal, anal canal. So that's it. Thank you for watching and listening to me. And let me introduce you the next reporter, which is the which is Miss Christine May Fernandez to introduce you the four main functions of the digestive system and why digestion is important. Thank you! Four main components, nutrients of digestion process. First, protein. Foods including beef, eggs, and beans contain in large protein molecules that the body breaks down into smaller molecules known as amino acid. Number 2. Carbohydrates Carbohydrates are sugars, starches, and fiber that can be found in a variety of foods depending on their chemical structure. Carbohydrates are classified as simple or complex. Number 3. Fats Fat molecules provide a rich source of energy, food, the body, and aid in vitamin absorption. Healthy fats include oil like corn, canola, olive, sunflower, soybeans, and sunflower. Less healthy fats include butter, shortening, and snack foods. Number 4. Vitamins. Vitamins are classified according to the liquid in which they dissolve. All of the B vitamins as well as vitamin C are water-soluble vitamins. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat-soluble vitamins. Each vitamin plays a unique role in the body's development and health. The body retains fat soluble vitamins in the liver and fatty tissues, but water soluble vitamins are difficult to store and are flushed out. Fun facts Number 1 The average person produces 2 pints of saliva every day, that is 32 ounces or 2 cans of soda. Number 2 the muscles in your esophagus act like a giant wave. That is what moves food or drinks down to your stomach. This wave action is called peristalsis. Number 3. The second part of your small intestine is called the jejunum. That's just fun to say. Number 4. Enzymes in your digestive system are what separate food into the 
different nutrients that your body needs. Num Number 5. The gut-brain axis, the close bound that exists between the digestive system and your brain. Emotion, including stress and brain disorders affect how your body digests food. Number 6. Your body can move your food through the digestive system, even while you are standing on your head. It is not connected to gravity because it works with muscle. Number 7. You know those laundry detergents you hear advertised that have enzymes to remove stains? Some of those enzymes are the same as those found in your digestive system. Number 8. The small intestine is about 22 to 23 feet long, while the large intestine is only about 5 feet long. Number 9. Ever wonder why it smells bad when you are past gas? It is because it is produced by fermented bacteria and then mixed with air. 10. Play, plate pus do not have stomachs. That's all. Thank you.